Well, according to the customer, he said it doesn't answer to the uh, accelerator. Bloody hell, timing change now, is isn't it? Diesel, oh, it's working, isn't it? Bit of a rickety old Joe, isn't it? But it seems to be working. Stinks, though. I bet DPS blocked on this. You can hear the Narina how our bushes at the back of the car and finish. Bushes are noisy, squeaking. Right, let's see what's it up here. It looks to me like it's an intermittent EGR fault, but let's just look at this boost sensor. There you are. It's almost completely obscured. That ain't going to really help much, is it? So the inlet manifold needs to come off and be cleaned out and uh, not shell blasted. But why have we got an EGR fault? Uh, well, sometimes they can be intermittently sticking. Uh, and obviously the feedback position is wrong then, because it's in the wrong position in relation to where it needs to be. That's probably leaking like billy -o. That needs to be sorted out for a start. So what we'll do, let's just have a look at this with multimeter. We'll measure the resistance of it. And we'll see if we go about changing the physical EGR valve, which is this here. Probably need to take it off and check it's not seized. I think I'll do that in a minute and have a look. Well, it didn't surprise me whatsoever to see 4507. It did surprise me to see 4CAE. And 40A4 didn't surprise me either. So 4507... It's basically uh, complaining, <laughs> if, if a control unit can complain, the DD is complaining that the EGR is deviating from what the DD is trying to achieve. It's trying to accomplish one thing, but the valve is having none of it, and it's basically doing what it wants. So usually that can be some issue with the solenoid we've just seen then, or the wiring, or even the vacuum pipes, but we'll come to that in a minute. We'll not jump to conclusions. 4CAE, usually, my experience, I've had these where we've had problems with uh, wiring, touching together and things like that, or the actual, um, there's something like some water or corrosion got in to the wiring and it's just resisted, so it can't, so the signal's implausible, basically, is what I'm trying to spit out there, <laughs> basically. So... The last one, 40A4, we've got three here, haven't we? Three lovely Falcos, but 40A4, it's just saying that in long term, it's drifting away from exactly where it should be. So they're all basically more or less meaning the same thing, but there's a number of things that can cause these fault codes, and different things can cause these type of fault codes. So we need to work out how do we start the fault finding procedure? Well, I always say, we, we need to look at what the easiest is first. So we'll look at the easiest thing first. Let's just look at the state of the vacuum pipe. Is it on? Is the vacuum on it? They can split further down the stream, you see, where the vacuum source is. If that's okay, how's the solenoid? Is the solenoid switching? Well, we can put our finger on the vac pipe and then we can put that back on and we can put our finger on the output of the solenoid with the pipe off, which goes to the EGR valve. And if that's generally okay and I can feel it on my finger sucking, that is something and it doesn't really tell you because if they fail, they can suck continuously and just pull the valve open. There's no PWM then, so it's just maximum duty and it's just pulling it right away open. I've had that before. However, usually when that happens, the car won't start because it's pulling the valve open so much that there's no air mass. It just, it just kills the air mass with the exhaust gas. So if there's a vacuum there and the engine isn't cutting out when the pipe's on and that vacuum's there on the output, then I would presume that's the correct amount. We don't really need to go any further on that. So just bear that one in mind. That is very important if you, that you get that. If it cuts out when the car's trying to start and you've got permanent vacuum, it's probably too much vacuum. But if you've got some vacuum, uh, without going down the road of measuring it with fancy measuring gauges and stuff like that, it should generally be okay if the car isn't cutting out. Of course, it should be checked and we'll do that shortly. So I think we'll leave it there and we'll crack on and see what we can what we can find. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this EGR valve. It's funny how I thought it might be the EGR valve, but you know, when you're doing this job since the 1990s, <laughs> you get a sixth sense, kind of tend to know what's, what the issues are going to be, you know. So, dead easy these. They have a pneumatic line, which has constant vacuum, and then it switches. It's Portsmouth modulated the solenoid, which is what this is here, the pneumatic 
pneumatic converter they call BMW balance it's basically just solenoid valve and what it does the vacuum match constantly there this switches and it opens and closes let's say it closes at 20,000 hertz which is 20,000 times a second it might be opening and closing very fast but that's actually how it controls the amount of vacuum it's a weird ground there look. that's a bit dodgy for the heater it controls the amount of vacuum applied at the actual so in the actual EGR valve which is just a vacuum canister I'll pick that up in a bit so there's your valve we can measure resistance of that in case it's faulty but I don't think it is probably something's intermittent look at the wiring there you are straight away wiring looks absolutely dodgy look I mean it didn't look much kosher did it but that wiring looks like it's it's shorted there that white and blue one that could be good so that's what it is so what we can do to check these is we can check the resistance of this we don't really give a cold or we can use very carefully usually have to cut these off because they snap otherwise where it says vacuum it's upside down but it don't matter it says vac and out so the vac where it says vac that's your constant vacuum feeding you should always have vacuum there and then that's your switchable output which obviously goes to this canister here and that canister just lifts the EGR up and down, opens and closes it. And then here, you've got a simple potentiometer which measures the position of the EGR. It's as simple as that, dead simple circuit. So we know this isn't faulty because it's actually telling us that there's a problem with the feedback. It's registering at some point, this valve inside is in the wrong position. As it moves up and down, the potentiometer logs the stroke of the piston of the, of the valve. So it knows if the valve's open, if it's closed or where it is in between exactly to the nearest hundreds of a millimetre, it's a very very precise system. So all this does, it's just a measuring device, it's not an actuator, it's just a measuring device. This is the actuator, basically. So all we have to do now is take a close look at that dodgy wire. If that's okay, we'll start doing some testing. So I thought I'd pause this and just give you a quick uh, idea of what I've found. This is a soldered in wire, you see that little connector there, that crimp connector. And what they've done, they've basically took a feed from there and they've basically used it to power this here. And this is a retrofitted breather pipe heater. And now the later N47 has them as standard. This one is a bit older and doesn't have it. So I just thought I'd explain what that wiring was if you were wondering, as you could see it on the video. But it didn't seem to uh, affect the EGR solenoid at all. So basically I just left that well alone. I just thought I'd explain it so we can carry on now with the video now you're all 100% in the know as to what that is so basically with the uh, heater addition for the breather sort of thing that messy thing I just disregarded that didn't seem to be affecting it too much I decided to pull the vac pipe off now so we pull this off and just just check have we got vacuum at the solenoid if we've no vacuum it ain't gonna work is it so as you had a load of vacuum on the nothing wrong with that and then I thought well what I'll do is I'll put that back on and I'll see as the engine's running if it's switching an output to the EGR so we just put that pipe back on and take the second pipe off and there you go it, that's uh, not so bad and as, a, as I've already forewarned if the engine won't start and you've got a vacuum there probably it's stuck inside the solenoid and it's pulling full vacuum and it uh, pulls the EGR on so what I'll do now is I'm going to put in the Mitivac and I'm going to put it straight to the EGR vacuum canister and I'm going to pull full EGR. And the reason I'm going to pull full EGR is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to test if the air mass decreases, in which case the valve isn't sticking on it. It's basically pulling, lot of, pulling open and it's letting all the exhaust gas flow back into the inlet manifold. And the second thing I'm trying to do with this, and it varies from car to car on live data availability, but I want to see physically... Um, the, p the position and percentage of the of the of the potentiometer or the voltage it should change it should go up and down as the as the push rod of the valve goes up and down with the vacuum and i will show you on the next um, part of the video now what, what it looks like basically on the live data on the thing too which is very good actually and it turns out that uh, really there was no issue with the valve it wasn't sticking because when i pulled the EGR 
it did change. So this is before I actually put the Mitivac on. It's quite the same, isn't it? Specified and actual is, well, it's more or less 400 kilograms per hour. There's nothing really standing out there as, as being faulty. However, um, once I put the Mitivac on and I pulled the, the full EGR, you can see that it will absolutely drop down to 200 kilogram per hour there. 224.75 and it should be 405 so that proved to me straight away that there was no sticking egr the vacuum canister was working the valve was going up and down as it should do the only thing i didn't check was the uh, percentage of the position center because i didn't find that live data but it didn't matter because i was quite satisfied that the physical egr valve was not faulty and i could then move on to looking at something else instead of concentrating on the egr valve and while I was in the system, I had a quick look at EGR, uh, sorry, DPF, because the DPF gives you a good idea of what's been going on. Has it been regenerating regularly? What's the back pressure? You know, all that type of stuff. What's the charger temperature? That could sometimes go wrong on these. What's the barometric pressure? And it's just good to spend literally 15, 20 seconds having a quick look and everything was pretty damn good. It's been regenerating quite well. Um, other than the leak on the exhaust and the sooted manifold, everything's in order there. So I decided to just have another look at the EGR uh, wiring. So when you get all the gunk off the wires, and you can see it's a classic case of signal, power and ground are touching each other. That's basically, definitely in my opinion, what it was. Now what do I do? Do I make a decision now? Do I, um, do I just fix them and isolate them and make sure they're insulated? Or do I take the EGR valve off and test it? Well, I don't really need to take it off and test it, though, basically. I mean, I'd like to see if it's gunked up. So what we'll do now is we'll test the solenoid, make them wires good, bolt the solenoid back because we've just done the vacuum test and that's OK. We know the valve ain't sticking because the Mitivac pulled it up and down. It was nice and smooth. And now we'll recommend in the manifold clean and uh, no shell blast. And it should be right. And I'll just leave this dodgy eater thing they've wired in this breather eater. So this is this is my stash at Coronadus. I've got a lot of good gear in there. So that pen pen doesn't belong there. That's the wrong place for that pen. That goes up there with all my stuff I'm gonna do for my teaching. Right, so what we've got here is got some female connectors I need. Which I've definitely got some there. There we are. Oh, bloody hell, there's a resistor on them. <laughs> oh, Jesus, what's the... Ah, oh, they'll do. Excellent. Right, let's test this soon. So we've got our KPS uh, multimeter up top, 16 ohms. I'm just basically using this type of a connector there. I've got loads of these. Essentially, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? So we'll do what I said. We'll build it up and leave it at that. So in the end, I repaired the wiring, built it all up, and everything was working. And just repairing those three wires fixed the whole problem, and that is all that was wrong with the EGR on this vehicle. One last look, live data is absolutely pretty much spot on. Well, thanks for watching, and tune in next time. Okay.